Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to take a closer look at Alphabet, aka Google. More importantly, we're going to take a closer look at the new CPU that they've recently announced and just kind of some of the AI solutions the company also announced at a recent event. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode so the first thing i want to take a closer look is their new cpu and yesterday's episode when i did more of an nvidia recap i kind of glazed over it really really quickly today i want to talk a little bit more about it more about how what it means with arm on the event that google is seeing right now which is their google cloud next they announced their first custom R base CPU designed for the data center. And this will be available to Google Cloud customers later this year. And Google is not the first company to create their own CPU, not the first company to create their own ARM based server CPU. There's a lot of cloud server providers. Microsoft recently announced the Maya 100, the Cobalt 100. Amazon uses the AWS Graviton from ARM base. NVIDIA uses the uh, uses ARM base for their Grace CPU, uh, and now we're seeing Google use it for their Google Axion processor. And this is, I, I, we're going to talk about why I think this is somewhat bearish to CPU companies, but this is not the first time Google has entered the semiconductor space. They, re they really started in 2015 when they built their first tensor processing unit. Now we are in the fifth generation of the TPU right now, and the TPU is more of an AI accelerator. Uh, they've also in 2018 released their first video coding unit, which I'm guessing they use for video transcoding. Again, they are a big company that deals with YouTube, for example, and video is very important. And in 2021, they kind of doubled down on custom system on a chip uh, solutions where they released their first of three generation of tensor chips for mobile devices. So we can see Google is really in here creating and becoming a pretty great semiconductor um, designer in one way or another. Before we go any further, we are now on the road to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Thank you all for the crazy support. So if you haven't and are enjoying the content, make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. Finally, if you want to support the channel a little bit more, make sure to check out my special offer at fool.com slash Jose. Now back to today's episode. And it's also very important to note that, hey, look, Google, which deals with a lot of things like video, decided to make a video coding unit. So this is why big tech companies go out there and create their own chip because there's certain workloads that they know they're always going to have. So it makes perfect sense because they have everything in the background. They know how it works. They know what's going to happen in the future for them to design these chips that are meant to improve that selected workload. Now, the reason they created this CPU right now is because they have found that the rate of CPU improvements has slowed recently. And to read that, it tells me that this might be a bearish sign to some extent for Intel and AMD, right? Because Intel and AMD are the ones creating these CPUs for the server side. And Google is out here saying, hey, look, you guys are moving way too slow. And this kind of reminds me of, more importantly, when Apple left Intel to kind of create their own their own chips because Intel was moving too slow. So this is definitely more a CPU problem than anything else. Ray do mention that right now, accelerators continue to improve and at such a huge, huge rate. So they're really mainly touching into the CPU space. So they mentioned that this Axion processor combines obviously their CP, their, their, their semiconductor expertise with the ARM's highest performing CPU core. So these deliver 30% better performance than the fastest general purpose ARM-based instances available in the cloud today and up to 50% better performance and up to 60% better energy efficiency than comparable current x86 which is uamd and intel based instances so again i think this is a more competitive pressure coming into amd and intel and it is why it is very very important why those two players need to focus in other things we're seeing amd focus on the mi300x we see Intel really focused on their AI accelerator 
in the foundry business. Google is already using the CPU for things like YouTube ads platform, uh, and they plan to deploy it in other services pretty, pretty soon. So some of you guys might be wondering, hey, Jose, what version of ARM Neoverse is this using? So this is using ARM Neoverse version two, and it's mainly meant for general purpose workloads like most CPUs, but also CPU based AI training and inferencing and more. So right now we are also seeing this world where companies are saying that, hey, look, CPUs are still great for certain AI inferencing. And now that we know a little bit about this ARM, I kind of want to take a closer look at ARM stock. For those that know me, I think ARM is a little bit overvalued, maybe a ton overvalued right now, but they definitely have some great news. We can see ARM right now sitting at $125. For those not familiar with the Neoverse, the Neoverse is kind of their solution when you want to build a data center CPU like we're seeing Google build it. They have numerous versions right here and ARM Neoverse V2 is the one we're taking a closer look at. If we look at their most recent earnings report, we kind of see some other players out there. Google, uh, Microsoft uses it for their Cobalt 100. Amazon uses it for their Graviton AWS. And like I mentioned, other companies are also using Neoverse. So right now we are definitely seeing a market move into ARM and and kind of leaving the x86 architecture this might also kind of while well, right now it is for the server side it should have cpu investors thinking is this eventually going to also happen into the client side, into the consumer side? Or are we going to see more ARM-based CPUs in laptops and desktops? And, and, and the list goes on in there, right? So pretty interesting and something that CPU investors should consider. Now, going back into Google, Google did mention that they also announced more general availability of their TPU, the version 5. So Google, for this version 5, they have two versions. Version 5E, which is more of like a power energy efficiency one and version 5p which is mainly meant for performance they say this these tpu is helping them with a lot of ai workloads and it's one of the reasons why companies ai companies should use google cloud instead of amazon cloud or microsoft cloud because google has their own kind of secret sauce obviously those other companies have that secret sauce as well um, but google has also announced that they are increasing their availability of nvidia's AI. H100. They're also going to be focusing on getting NVIDIA's Blackwell, um, Blackwell GPUs and the GB200, which is NVIDIA's Grace CPU and Blackwell GPU into the product line in the future. So NVIDIA is, I mean, Google is really focusing on creating one of the best AI infrastructure servers out there. And they're doing it by not only creating their own semiconductor systems, but also by partnering up with great companies like NVIDIA. Now, the final thing I wanna take a closer look at is the valuation of, of Alphabet. We have seen that the stock has gone up a nice amount, but if we look at PE ratio for one year, the stock's valuation is currently sitting at 20, which is not that crazy expensive, in my opinion. Another big player out there that's in a similar price is Meta Platforms. And these are two players that you can kind of compare against each other because most of the revenue comes from the advertisement side. So Google is definitely a company in my portfolio, one that I really do enjoy and one that I can definitely see benefit from this overall market right now. So Google, if you haven't, I definitely would recommend recommend checking out their Google Cloud Next video. It was about an hour and 30 minutes long, almost an hour and 40, where they talk a lot about their AI infrastructure solution. But more importantly, they also talked about their um, AI solutions. They are increasing their AI large language model. They're bringing more AI solutions to the consumer side, to the coding side, to the video side. So many people, when we think of of AI, we usually think of OpenAI and Microsoft, but it does seem like Google is still stepping up into this play and they're going harder and harder each time. And they're definitely moving in the right direction, in my opinion. So if the AI market is real, and I do believe it is real, Google will definitely benefit from this space. Personally, right now, I think it's more of like a dollar cost average. I wouldn't say Google is at an amazing valuation, more of a dollar cost average, but I definitely would like to hear you guys, the viewer, what do you think is happening with Google right now? Are you buying? Is this a great value right now? Or is it more of a dollar cost average opportunity? So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care. Have a good day and see you next time.